Welcome to this presentation on what is a Geographic Information System or GIS. We are going to specifically discuss the following aspects. First, what is the connection between geography and GIS? Second, briefly review the history of a GIS. Third, define a GIS and its components. Fourth, distinguish between GIS systems and GI science. Fifth, explore some critiques of GIS and finally list some common GIS software tools. Geography and GIS are closely connected. In fact, GIS evolved out of geography as a means to study the spatial arrangement of objects on the surface of the earth. In geography, we ask questions about geographic reality such as where are features located on or near the surface of the earth? We can also include questions dealing with the distribution and variation of geographic phenomena. Next, we can ask why questions dealing with the reasons as to why certain spatial patterns are present. Next, we can ask questions about what to do given that we know information from the where and why answers. A GIS allows us to manage and analyze all the data and information we gather in our investigations of geographic reality. GIS has a long and rich history starting from the 1960s. Since then, a number of technologies and institutions have shaped the evolution of the discipline. You will notice that Global Positioning Systems or GPS in 1985, the Geographical Web in 1991, and the Google Earth software in 2005 have all in some way shaped the development of GIS. Of particular interest in the early 1990s was the idea of GIS as being a science with a well-defined set of theories, methods, and approaches. Today, GI science is seen as an umbrella term that provides a strong focus on the theories that inform the GIS technologies. We will use the term GIS to mean either a system or a science perspective, depending on the context. A number of key elements make up a GIS. These include people, software, procedures, hardware, and data. But this data is a special type of data called spatially referenced data. We will look at the details of this type of data soon. Now that we know what is a GIS, we can begin to understand and justify its existence. One of the primary goals of a GIS is to transform high quality data into useful evidence to support problem solving and decision making. For all practical purposes, the GIS can be considered as a specialized software tool. This software tool then manages our spatial data. The real world objects we measure are called features. We can organize the spatial data by themes or by time. One example of organization by themes is data showing the network of streets in a city. Nothing else is recorded. Hence, streets will be a thematic data set. One example of organization by time is data showing the extent of forest clear cutting at a particular time, say November 2013. Because only one instant of time is recorded, this is a temporal data set. Within the GIS, the data is stacked on top of each other in layers. They overlap because they all share the same geographical boundary and coordinate referencing system. We are now at the stage of trying to understand what is spatially referenced data. Recall this is the type of data that a GIS handles. In its most general sense, spatially referenced data is any data that has location information linked to it. Location information will be things such as latitude and longitude, and street addresses. Location is very useful in the modern society. It enables all kinds of services and facilities to be made available in a focused way. In order to find your location, you need some frame of reference, which we call a geospatial referencing system. If everyone uses the same geospatial reference system, then it becomes easy to locate yourself relative to others. There are three categories of spatial referencing systems. The three categories of spatial referencing systems help to organize location from a global to a local level. At the global level, census geography, for example, postal code, 
is used to organize data. Census geography is also known as a geographic identifier reference system. Similarly, at the intermediate and local levels, we have geocoding and latitude and longitude respectively. In GIS analysis, the latitude and longitude or coordinate reference system is important. In the coordinate reference system, location is determined based on an assumed reference shape of the earth that serves as a reference or a datum. We now know what is a GIS and how the data is organized and stored. We can think of a GIS from three perspectives or functionalities. First, the GIS can be viewed as a geographic database and hence the notion of a geodatabase perspective. Second, the GIS can be viewed as a mapping system and hence the notion of a geovisualization perspective. Third, the GIS can be viewed as a tool to transform the geographic data using mathematical and statistical processes, hence the notion of a geoprocessing perspective. Now for a quick summary of where we are in our understanding of a GIS. First, we have the real world in its full complexity shown at the bottom of the figure. Next, we create a spatial database and organize each similar real world features into thematic layers. So for example, all the streets will be stored in one layer and all the land use type will be stored in another layer. This layered arrangement is called a GIS representation, a map, a model, or a database. The data layers stack on top of each other because they refer to the same geographic extent on the ground and also because they share the same coordinate reference system. Earlier, we talked about the history of GIS and the emergence of GI science to be the discipline that deals with the science behind the GIS technology. You may pause the video to read through the specific descriptions of GI science. As with all technologies, there are pros and cons. In the case of GIS, there are critiques dealing with cost, time, errors, power dynamics, and real-world representations. Of particular interest is the issue of GIS and privacy. Individual pieces of location information can be merged based on a common location or identifier, resulting in a complete profile being built up. The potential to misuse this generated profile is the focus of GIS and privacy critiques. There are a number of GIS software available. Once you understand the science behind the technology, it becomes relatively easy to become competent in any of the available GIS software.